Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Uh, we're going to be reacting to this Twitter or this tweet or this X. I don't know what they call it anymore. But uh, by this guy, he's talking about he lives on the east coast of Florida. He's paying $660 for six years and then they jacked it up to $4,200. Um, and like we mentioned in another video, I know a guy that lives on the east coast and he pays $800 a month. So nine ninety six hundred a year. So yeah, the east coast has crazy insurance rates, but... Uh, Kirby, what do you got on this? Well, I think you misquoted a little bit on this. He started six years ago. He was paying six hundred dollars a month, and then now it, and then over the six years, it gradually increased. And now he's paying, okay, uh, I believe, yeah, forty two hundred dollars a year. So okay. he's starting at six hundred. And I remember when insurance was insurance was that low. Period. I mean, the insurance, and we're we're on the let's call it the West Coast. I mean, you're more central than than me on the west coast of Florida, and we've seen it. And I mean, Alex, and I'll tell everybody, my investment thesis in Florida is I'm not, I don't want to be in flood zones because I won't, I don't want to pay flood insurance. And I don't ever, 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 ever want to be on the east coast of Florida just because, you know, percentage wise, most hurricanes are going to come from, going to come hit the east side. So insurance costs, damage costs, and all those other things are going to be impacted. I mean, I really don't want to be on the West Coast of Florida either because we we get some every now and then. But that's just my investment thesis. I try to keep it central and try to keep it more on land than closer to off land. But with that being said, this guy's numbers are catastrophic. But all I can really say is Lord have mercy on the souls of the people in Florida because with these insurance companies leaving and more people having to go to, you know, citizens and things like that, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not looking pretty. It's not looking pretty. I'm just going to call it like I see it. I mean, I've got insurance quotes that went up 125% year over year for properties that's nowhere near the water. I mean, nowhere near the water. 125% annual increases. I have uh, one property that I, that I have when I first started paying insurance on there, and I've had it for about six years. I started off paying, I want to say, $800 a, a year for insurance, not paying $3,200 a year. And it's about been about six years since I had it. So that's the crazy part. And then for... You know, people want to say, oh, yeah, that's why you rent. Understand when you're renting, you're paying that cost also. When you're renting, you're actually paying more than that cost. You're paying for the insurance increases. You're paying for the property taxes increases. You're paying for the higher cost of maintenance. All that, I mean, if your you know, landlord or whatever is doing their right due diligence and, you know, setting it appropriately, you're paying for all that. All those increases. So when you wonder why your your rent is increasing by such a large amount, it's because the cost of the owner, the cost of the person who owns that property goes higher with it. So it's not just, oh, landlords are greedy. I mean, I remember when we first started this YouTube channel uh, around COVID time and, you know, a lot of people was not paying, you know, you know, they had the moratorium. And then rent started increasing and we had that video called Landlord's Revenge. Do you really think that you're going to have these landlords possibly go into bankruptcy default or foreclosure because you say that tenants don't have to pay and then when the moratorium comes off, they're not going to try to get every dollar that they lost during the moratorium. They're investors for a reason. They invest because they're trying to make money. They're not investing out of the goodness of their heart just to sing kumbaya with the common man. And for renters and people, people always say, oh, that's why I don't want to own a house. And you think that, oh, because you're renting, you're going to renting, you're going to go on scale. That's not true. Prices are going to go up. As you see right now in Florida, prices are higher. Interest rates is higher and the prices in Florida are still high. Insurance rates through the roof. Property taxes, we haven't even seen the beginning of the property taxes increases in Florida yet. 
because the government always lags, uh, always work off lagging indicating data. And then, of course, with property taxes in Florida, it's only a certain percentage amount that they can raise property taxes each year. Look at Texas. Look at California. California now, this weekend, I mean, I don't know in this video post, but the weekend of August 20th, California, the only thing you was ever worried about was hurricanes, right? <laughs> I mean, not hurricanes, you was worried about earthquakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Earthquakes. Now you got earthquakes. Now you got wildfires. And then now, like I said, as of August 20th, a hurricane is about to hit California, the first one in 48 years. Only thing that equal to damage, 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 insurance companies having to pay out. Insurance companies paying out, meaning everybody, everybody is going to feel the pain. Especially the area where this damage is happening. So California is going to be just like Florida. When it comes to insur uh, insurance rates and property tax rate, because California usually had the lowest. They used to, percentage-wise, they used to have the lowest. Now they're about to come through a big hardship. Texas is going in that elk also when it comes to property taxes. And then I mean property taxes and insurance. And then Florida, this this is crying damn shame for all people involved. But Alex, sorry for going too long and ranting, but this one is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Um it's it's crazy to see. And I'm surprised. I'm honestly kind of surprised it didn't come sooner in Florida, uh, because we've always had hurricanes, and sometimes we get two, three a year. Um, but what's crazy to me is seeing like companies start to pull out of Florida, as we talked about, like, because I can only imagine once that starts to happen more and more, it creates a monopoly effect for the remaining insurance companies and right. who's to say they can't just charge whatever the hell they want when i mean where else are you going to go so it yeah it's definitely interesting and interesting to see what will come if interest or if uh insurance rates will start to slow down or if they're just going to keep stacking up but yeah well, i guess we'll, well you, you, you said it best you just said it best yeah. Who's to say if it's not a monopoly, they are gonna charge whatever the hell they want? They already charge whatever the hell they want. Yeah. We just we just stuck whatever price that they that they give us. You know, that's they already they already there. Yeah. I mean, and it's but the thing is, is this is a part that a lot of people don't talk about, or maybe it was just missed in the news. When COVID was happening, you remember. Uh, insurance companies going to solve it because the people was doing the roof, the scam, uh, roofing scams. You know, oh, you got hell damage. Your your insurance company got to pay for it, no cost to you. People buy new roofs. The insurance company was running out of money to pay for the roofs on people's houses for that they already got done. That they was coming in solving there. Then you add on the catastrophe of you know the hurricane, but then you add COVID on there, and then the cost of labor, materials, everything goes higher, exponentially higher. That's a higher cost to the insurance company. So, I mean, I, it was it was insurance companies, billions of dollars underwater just off of the roofing crisis that they was going through. Trying to battle, trying to battle homeowners saying, oh no, the insurance shouldn't cover your roof. The lawyer fees and things like that. That's the part people forget about. Only thing they're thinking about is hurricanes. It's, that was the first straw. Then you add in the hurricanes. I mean, this last one over there in Fort Myers Beach, it didn't it didn't destroy a town with, you know, with like hundred thousand dollar, you know, shack homes or nothing like that. This was, you know, an expensive area. And then the labor, the materials, you remember, wood was up like fourteen hundred percent during COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all that cost goes up. And you know, the the contractors, they're gonna charge more. Because when there's more demand, you get to set the price. And then the only way that's going to tap down is if people move out, there's less hurricanes, and things of that nature. So it's it's going to be, like you said, you said it best. It's going to be interesting. I mean, like we talked about in a previous video, I think there's going to be a lot of 
moves and shifts in people's life. People gonna have to really sit down and and make a decision or have to make a decision on what's best for them and their family. And I mean, I love Florida, love the weather, love everything about it, but people are going to have to make that real hard decision, just like people had to make that hard decision in California. I mean, I know people in California making $75,000 a year, but they got to live, you know, two and a half hours away from their job. So they just get in the gym membership and sleep in their car two or three times a week because they can't afford to drive back and forth making $75,000 a year because the cost of everything is too high. And Florida is just moving in that direction. That's my view. With all that being said, guys, uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.